All right, welcome to today's video. This is Dr. Taylor Crick at the Washington Wellness Center, and today's video is a brief literature review of the immune benefits of a sauna. So sauna use is associated with a lot of different things, but I want to just talk about the mechanism there, but not get too deep. My main goal with this video is to be brief, but talk about some of the immune benefits that are shown in the uh, biomedical literature um, explaining the mechanism of this. So let's get started. So first off, there's a lot of cool, cool research when it comes to sauna usage. And some of it is associative, which means that people who use the sauna just so happen to have lower risk of Alzheimer's, lower risk of cardiovascular disease, lower incidence of these things. Um, and, and so that's really, really cool that it's, a, it's associated with that. But what is the mechanism? So first I wanted to just show you um, a, 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 a review article that was done in 2018. And there's tons of these that are out there. The full text is available. They're really, really cool. So this one is from the journal Evidence-Based Complementary and Alternative Medicine. It's 2018. It's a, a systematic review. Clinical effects of regular dry sauna bathing. So this one is not talking about the immune effects, but it's talking about all the other effects, the, the cardiovascular effects, the inflammation effects, the depression effects, and what has been studied in research and what that research shows. And it's not all cut and dry of like sauna is this magic miracle, but like I said, it's associated with all these incredible outcomes. So they're looking at the research to show the mechanism. So that's just one that I would encourage, you know, somebody to, to look up and read if you're curious about sauna literature. But getting into the immune system, System, what has sauna usage been shown to do? So this journal or this study in the Journal of Human Kinetics showed that one single session of sauna usage raised the white blood cell count. So one of the things that sauna does is it induces a mild fever. Now, I just recently confirmed that personally, I took a thermometer into our infrared sauna, did my normal sauna session, and took my, my core body temperature before and after, and then 30 minutes later, and it induced a mild fever for me of 100 degrees. So that is something that even if it's just from my experimentation of what's called an, an N equals one experiment, meaning that I just did it on myself, sauna will absolutely induce a, a mild fever. So one of the things that's been shown to do through uh, a CBC is just that that raises white blood cell count. So your white blood cells are your immune cells. So that includes things like neutrophils, lymphocytes, uh, basos, um, monocytes, eosinophils. Those are all white blood cells. And then within your lymphocytes, you have things like T and B lymphocytes and natural killer cells. And, and this is all just really, really important for your immune system, both your innate immune system and your adaptive immune system. Your white blood cell count goes up uh, in times of infection because it's, it's, it's bringing in those uh, first responders, let's say, to address that infection. So by sauna, by doing a sauna usage, it increase white blood cell count just in general uh, really cool. And if you read this study, it's it's different. There were changes that were seen differently versus in the athletes versus the non-athletes. They saw some uh, white blood cells raise more than others in each of the two groups. But the, the main takeaway from the study was that in both trained and untrained people, a sauna session raised their white blood cell count. So pretty cool there. This one, these next few are really, really cool. So this is a study out of Japan that shows that... Uh, induction of something called heat shock protein 70. So we're going to talk about that in the next few uh, studies and slides, heat shock protein 70. And, and basically what you see from the title here is that whole body far infrared hyperthermia, which most saunas are far infrared. Ours, most infrared saunas, of course. Um, ours is full spectrum. It does have mid and near infrared, but the large majority of the, the heating mechanism is far infrared. So what this is basically saying and what the paper showed was that by doing sauna therapy, it induced this thing called heat shock protein 70. So what does that mean to you right now? Nothing, but let's look at the other studies. The next study from the Journal of Virology showed that heat shock protein 70 is related to the inhibition of influenza virus 
replication. Let's just let's just put it simply. So when this heat shock protein 70 is expressed from sauna usage, it blocks the replication of the influenza virus. So really, really cool. Now that's not saying that it blocks the replication of coronavirus or of you know a DNA type virus like a herpes virus, certainly, but influenza is an RNA virus, uh, coronavirus an RNA virus, and it's just showing that induction of this heat shock protein stopped the viral replication of influenza. That's all that it's showing, but very, very cool. So you're inducing a mild fever, you're raising white blood cells, you're inducing this heat shock protein 70, which is helping to inhibit some of this viral replication. Pretty cool stuff so far. Now here's the last one from the International Journal of Hyperthermia. And it says dissecting the role of hyperthermia in natural killer cell mediated anti-tumor responses. So your natural killer cells are a lymphocyte that kill tumors, that kill infections, that kill pathogens, part of your innate immune system, a, a first, uh, first line responder that are your natural killer cells, really, really important. What this paper shows, and when you go in to read it further, is it shows that we know that hyperthermia in, uh, activates natural killer cells, and then the natural killer cells, in turn, we know have anti-tumor properties. And they're connecting the, the, the mechanism there of like how is hyperthermia inducing this response that we're seeing, and they're looking for the mechanism. So the last thing that I'll show you is this picture that is from the same um, journal article. The full text is available up there. Uh, it's that from Diane's. Uh, so look down here. So number one is hyperthermia. Okay, so sauna or, or uh, anything else, but sauna is what we're talking about here. So hyperthermia then leads to number two, these natural killer cells clustering. Now three, four, five, I'm not going to really explain, but three I will. Because look, you're going to recognize this. There's the heat shock protein 70 that the hyperthermia causes. So over here, it causes the natural uh, killer cells to cluster. And over here, it causes the heat shock proteins to be expressed by these tumor cells. These heat shock proteins are then taken to the natural killer cells, to the heat shock protein receptor. And number six step is the kill step. That's the important step. So this poster is showing, or this graphic is showing, hyperthermia leads to these downstream events that eventually lead to this natural killer cell killing the tumor cell. So really, really cool there. So in conclusion, hyperthermic conditioning, sauna conditioning, it's called different things in the literature, sauna bathing, but it's all hyperthermic conditioning, has been shown to induce mild fever. That's a for sure thing. Uh, it, and like I said, you could take a thermometer in with you and just prove it to yourself, but it, it will induce a mild fever. Um, it will increase white blood cell count. It will increase natural killer cell activity. And it's going to activate heat shock protein 70, which can block viral replication and also activate natural killer cells to kill tumor cells. So some really cool things from the literature. Now, this is in no way, shape, or form claiming that uh, using the sauna is going to prevent you from getting viral infections or that you're going to get over viral infections faster. Uh, we're not making any claims as to what it can do for you. You could feel free to make your own interpretations based on this research. The only thing that we're doing with this video is just showing you that the research is out there, that the mechanisms are out there of how can sauna do so many good things and how it can it be good for your immune system to artificially induce a fever. Well, the research and the literature is out there explaining the mechanisms.